Hey, what's going on everybody? I am Joshua Santora com coming to you live, not from the Kennedy Space Center today necessarily, but from nature. As we celebrate the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, we wanted to give you a special look at some of the things that really make the Kennedy Space Center special. We are in the middle of a national wildlife refuge. To tell us more about the institutional effort that is a part of our spaceport, here is NASA Communications' Greg Harland. Greg, take it away. Thank you, Joshua, and happy Earth Day, everybody. I'm Greg Harlan with NASA's Kennedy Space Center Office of Communication. While this is not a typical April, it is a celebration of our home planet and a time when we collectively commit to preserving and protecting the Earth for generations to come. This year marks the 50th observation of Earth Day. Even while practicing social distancing, we can connect with nature and perhaps acquire new skills with healthy benefits. We can exercise outside, landscape, plant a garden, or even just enjoy the simple sounds of nature. NASA is also celebrating Earth Day with a campaign we like to call hashtag Earth Day at Home. One of the things I like to do at my house is cook, and I like to use natural herbs and spices for my cooking. And one of the things I'm going to show you today is how to actually plant herbs for an herb garden. Right here I have three different varieties of herbs, and these you can get at any garden center, and you can get either regular or organic uh, versions. Anyway, what you're going to do is you're going to get a pot of soil, moist soil, and you're gonna take one of these packages and you're gonna open it up like I did right here. And you're going to basically, in your moist soil, make a little indentation with your finger to accept the seeds. And then you're gonna grab some of your parsley seeds like I have right here, and you're just gonna drop them right in there. And then you're gonna cover up the soil. And then you're gonna give it just a little bit of water. And that's it. You are on your way to having your own herb garden. Uh, about three weeks ago, I went ahead and planted uh, both cilantro and sweet basil. And as you can see right here, after about three weeks, I have these two amazing plants that are ready to pick and use in my gardening or in my cooking make that. And one of the interesting things about this is these plants will keep growing and keep growing and you can use them over and over again. And you know you have the freshest herbs in the stuff you'd like to cook. Kennedy Space Center shares boundaries with the Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge on Florida's Atlantic coast. The refuge covers approximately 144,000 acres and is home to more than 315 native and migratory bird species, 25 mammal species, and 65 amphibian and reptile species. The refuge supports one of the highest numbers of threatened and endangered species anywhere in the nation. One of the animals you might see when you visit the Kennedy Space Center include our sentinel, the American alligator. It's not known how many reside at Kennedy, but one thing is for sure, there are many. Another resident is the Florida scrub jay, the only species of birds endemic to the Sunshine State. Scrub jays are similar to a blue jay in color and size, but lack the crest on the back of their heads. One of our slow movers is the gopher tortoise. Oftentimes it can be seen munching on grass throughout the center. Our nation's symbol, the bald eagle, makes KSC its home. The bald eagle migrates here every fall through spring, arriving around the third week of August. There are several eagle nests throughout the center, and the most well-known one can be seen during Kennedy Space Center bus tours. The nest is large enough to fit a king-size bed with a diameter of seven feet. Kennedy property also has a varied habitat, including coastal dunes, saltwater estuaries and marshes, freshwater impoundments, scrub, pine flatwoods, and hardwood hammocks. These habitats provide refuge for more than 1,000 species of plants. Of these, there are 39 state-listed plants as threatened, endangered, or species of special concern within Kennedy's boundaries. The Kennedy Environmental Program supports the preserve by balancing its programs with those of our launch activities. One example is our shoreline restoration project. The Shoreline Restoration Project's mission is to protect our launch infrastructure from the encroachment from the sea. A secondary benefit is protecting animal life by giving natural habitat to those animals that make the coastline their home. Other examples of the environmental program's impact at Kennedy include support of controlled burns, which help manage the overgrowth of vegetation at the center, participation in America Recycles Day, or the many solar farms throughout the center that provide clean power to our facilities. So as you can see, the Kennedy Space Center has a very robust environmental program that not only takes care of our environment, but also does some of the greatest things off the earth. I wanna thank you for sharing Earth Day with me today. 
And remember, if you go on Twitter or Instagram, you can reach us at hashtag Earth Day at Home. Back to you, Joshua. So there you have it. Not only is the Kennedy Space Center a technological and engineering masterpiece where we push the boundaries of what's possible for exploration in the future, we are also a national wildlife refuge where nature meets technology. So as we push the boundaries, as we're reaching for new heights, we're also doing everything we can for those on Earth and in space to make sure that they're ready and prepared and well taken care of for future generations. That's all for this special edition of NASA at Home Spaceport Series. I'm Joshua Santor reminding you that even the sky isn't the limit.